I'm Guiley. And this is David. We studied architecture together at Cardiff University and shared a passion for adventure, skiing, camping, hiking and seeing the world in slightly original ways. We started dreaming of a big trip. So what started as a, a hiking trip to explore Norway then became a big road trip over several months and ended up as a several year project converting a boat and moving on to it. We're currently in the long voyage up to the Arctic. I filled out the log this morning. Today is day 67. It came as a fairly fluid idea. It started out as a way of getting through our, you know, the pressures of qualifications and jobs and you know other stresses. And I think the longer we left it, the more it escalated to go from something which was a, a three or four week hiking adventure, a trip up to Norway, and it quickly became something a lot bigger. That's when you became a lot more interested in their lifeboats and their conversions. I took quite a lot of persuading, came around to it eventually. But then here we are, floating in a Norwegian fjord, in a converted lifeboat. Great weather, great conditions. Things are good. A few months before the boat arrived, we got hold of a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever, Shackleton, and uh, he's been a key part of both the conversion and the adventure. Taking on what was our blank canvas for a conversion was very exciting as designers because there was so much potential. project definitely started with being about coming to visit these places and be comfortable and self-sufficient in these amazing landscapes and actually as the project's grown a lot of the satisfaction comes from the fact that we've done all this ourselves and we're able to maintain it and we're able to travel thousands and thousands of miles in it with relatively few issues. From New Haven to Tromsø, we could have done that journey in a matter of weeks. Going in a more direct route, we could have gone straight up across the North Sea. We took the more inland route partly because it would be a lot more comfortable. The lifeboat is better suited to more inland routes, but also because we wanted a slow adventure. We wanted to draw out the trip. We wanted to experience a range of different cultures, different approaches to living by the sea, different landscapes, different climates. As architects, I feel like the thinking that we have applied to it has very much been informed by buildings that we've designed and by the principles we'd apply. You never want to sing your praises too much and say we could do this better than anyone else. I think we've taken our individual approach to design and how we think about things and how we've designed things and definitely have our mark on this project. The lifeboat has really been quite a simple vessel to build within because it's been so empty, it has a big flat floor. Everything is incredibly strong. It's a 100 person survival lifeboat built out of fiberglass. It's 11 meters long and three and a half meters wide and has pretty generous headroom all the way through. Taking that blank canvas and then saying, okay, where do we want the views to be? Where do we want to allow light in? What do we want to feel as more private spaces? And what do we want to have big expansive views out of? So we have an incredibly light living space with big panoramic views out either side of the boat. They let a huge amount of light in, but also allow us to experience the majesty of the fjords and the mountains around us in a way that rarely ever get inside another boat. 
know, when you sit in the main space, you know, it's fantastic when we have great views out the side, but when we're in somewhere a little bit more developed in a, a town, if we're visiting a marina, people are obviously very interested in the boat and you know, they like, oh, they like to look in and see what it is because it's so interesting and different. But you've got that public kind of space. We can obviously close it down with the blinds, but it's nice to then be able to retreat into your bedroom. It's a private area you can't see in from the outside. The panels really help define the look of the boat externally. We've always wanted the boat to be this contrast of very utilitarian and functional exterior contrasted with a, a very homely, quite modern interior. We've always described the project as a, a slow adventure, whether that's because the boat itself is slow or whether it's because we want to spend time in places. Yeah, we'll leave that up to people to make up their mind, but the boat only travels at six knots, so it's comparable to a sailing boat. Whilst we could have done this journey even at six knots a lot quicker, we are taking our time and we have left New Haven and headed to the northern coast of Europe through France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, before heading to Sweden and up the coast to Norway where our journey continues, but it's where it begins in the original sense of the adventure is to come to Norway, take it slowly to really explore the coastal landscape. It took a little while for the people in our boat yard to, uh, to get behind us, you know. At, at first they, uh, they thought, just another project, you know, just another boat. As time went on, we gained the full support of all the different people who own boats, the, uh, the guys who own the boat yard themselves, and uh, benefited massively from the years of experience they had, maybe often just tinkering with boats in their free time but the, uh, the wealth of knowledge that that generated all contributed to and, what we've done. And the stories. The worst low was definitely the night of day one. The boat was relatively unfinished internally. We had a slight freak accident with the engine where a bolt had worked its way loose. We had chosen a slightly poor anchorage, made a few bad decisions and just been really quite unlucky. We had a really uncomfortable night that was physically and mentally testing. The following day, we woke up with renewed resolve, fixed the problem. It was beautiful weather. We went on to our next port, and then the next day we crossed the channel, which was our most open sea route. And one of our first nights was a beautiful mooring in a cove tied up to a cliff face. We had a barbecue on a small ledge overlooking the boat. We were quite far north and so there were really long daylight hours and actually it all felt worth it just in that one moment having some great food overlooking the boat in a, in a remote place that you wouldn't have been able to get to in any other way. Getting to that point made all the challenges worth it. We're making our way steadily north. So uh, yeah, we're looking forward to getting up to Tromsø, which is our final destination. And it will be exciting to put a pin in the end of the journey itself to get to Tromsø, but that's not where the story ends.